Age of Empires 2 is filled with weird quirks and mechanics, and sometimes rare bugs end up presenting themselves in important games. If you watched AoE 2 around the year 2012, you were familiar with the rivalry between the Viper and Tim. Viper had not yet morphed into his full-fledged dominant form, and, spoiler alert, Tim absolutely wrecked him in the 2012 Masters of Arabia tournament. But this series is interesting not just for drama, but also for an interesting bug that manifests itself in Game 4. As a side note, this game was played before the user patch introduced spectating features, so when you see Fiage co oping with Tim, he's just sitting in the game to spectate. But during the game, we see Tim pinging Viper's scout. The scout clearly is not in Tim's line of sight, so how is he able to keep track of it? Well, if we're at Tim's point of view and click the Idle Villager button, the scout briefly is selected and our screen jumps to position itself over the unit. For some reason, it appears as though the game thinks Viper's scout is one of Tim's idle villagers. As wrong as that sounds, the truth is even weirder. Tim actually has a villager, garrisoned inside of Viper's scout. And not just any villager, but a dead villager. Okay, that's pretty strange. So let's load up version 1.0c and show off what happens. Here we have a scout attacking a villager. We're going to spam right click the villager as it's dying. Now, do you notice anything weird? Take a look at the UI at the bottom of the screen. The scout now has a dead villager garrisoned inside of it. When we right clicked the villager as it was dying, we were able to kidnap it and garrison it inside of the scout. And the garrisoned villager shows up as idle, which is why Tim can select Viper's scout by pressing the idle villager button. The same thing happens if you have idle villagers garrisoned inside of a converted transport ship. The idle villager button shows you where the ship is located, but you won't be able to interact with it in any way. Let's check out the moment where this all started. Viper scout is attacking some of Tim's villagers, and Viper must have right clicked this villager just as it was dying. We see the garrison icon appear in the bottom of the interface, and from Tim's point of view, we can now start pressing the idle villager button to select the scout. This bug was one of the earlier ones fixed by the user patch, and the fix is mentioned in patch notes dating back to 2011. It's one of those rare bugs that many people have reported, where a villager would garrison into an attacking scout during its final activity pass before being able to transition to the dead state. This would keep the villager alive, and allow the idle villager button to track its location. According to Cision, this was supposed to be a feature of the game, where scouts would be able to kidnap villagers. So what's all of this hoopla about kidnapping villagers? Well, in their early design documents, Ensemble had ideas about using the Celts, Mongols, and Vikings as raider civilizations that would behave quite differently than their standard counterparts. One of their special abilities would have been to kidnap enemy villagers by garrisoning them inside of a scout, returning them to a town center, and ungarrisoning them as units converted to the kidnapping player. The kidnap feature went far enough in the original game's design process that it actually was implemented and tested, and when Ensemble Studios decided to cut the feature, they missed a few details when they tried to remove it. First is the aforementioned bug where dying units could still be kidnapped, and second is that they never removed some of the kidnap data associated to the scout cavalry, and actually, since this data is left in, we can use it to implement modded units that have the kidnap ability. Tasks define the actions that units are able to perform, the task list is read from top to bottom. When we right click a unit, the game finds the first task from this list that is able to perform. Since the combat task is listed above the kidnap task, the scout ends up attacking villagers when we right click them. But when a villager is dying, the scout cannot engage it in combat, but it could still kidnap it as part of an oversight that wasn't caught during development. That's what the user patch fixed. Units can no longer be kidnapped while they are in the process of dying. Anyway, if we want to mod a unit to be able to kidnap villagers, we can replace its combat task with the kidnap task. The definitive edition cleaned up the scout cavalry and removed all of the kidnap data, but we can add it back. We'll set up the kidnap task exactly how it was in the original, with a class of civilian and a work range of 0.25. We'll also need to set the scout's garrison capacity to 1 so that it can hold a villager. Now we can test this out in game, and we see the scout kidnaps villagers. Great, but there's one problem. Now we can kidnap other things as well! Oh, so, that got me wondering. What else can we kidnap? 
Ah, this AI isn't getting a wonder victory. If I take the wonder from them, that's my wonder now. Oh, but, but wait, let's try that again. Why does the vision of my scout in town center disappear when I collect the wonder? I can still control the scout, I just can't see it. Uh, okay, if you want to experiment and manage to find out what's going on here, leave a comment and tell me about it. I'm rather afraid right now, so I'm just going to step aside and tell you how actually to implement the kidnap feature correctly. We start over with the basic scout unit in DE. Now we copy it, add a new unit, and paste the scout data to this new unit. On the new unit, we delete the combat task and add in the kidnap task at the bottom of the task list. Again, setting the class to civilian and work range to 0 0.25. For both scout units, we set the garrison capacity to 1. And finally, we set the task swap group to 3. This field will swap between the two scout units based on the task we ordered to perform. This allows us both to kidnap units and to engage in combat with the same scout. Now we'll test this one more time and see we can kidnap villagers and we cannot kidnap houses. Perfect. One final note. The Definitive Edition only fixed the kidnap issue by removing the kidnap tasks from the scout. It never incorporated the user patch bug fix, and it still is possible to kidnap units while they are dying. The scout then brings the corpse home and throws it on the ground outside of the TC. Now that we know how to implement this feature, let's check out a few mods where it's used. First is, well, the simple kidnap mod, which does exactly what the name implies. It enables the kidnap ability for scouts. You can play with it on Voobly if you want, and it's even been ported to the Definitive Edition. T90 has a few old community games if you want to check them out and see it in action. Next, there are the Realms mod and the Portuguese Civ mod. Both of these mods add a variety of custom civilizations to the game, and they go crazy with adding creative civilization bonuses. For example, the Portuguese Civ mod implements civilization bonuses for when wonders are constructed, and the Saracens gain monks with plus 4 range that can convert buildings from range. I can only imagine this bonus being ludicrous. Or ludicrously useful for a pacifist run, that is. Anyway, this mod also implements parts of the raider civilizations, including giving civs such as the Mongols the ability to kidnap units. In the Castle Age, we gain a technology at the town center, which we can research to unlock the kidnap ability. Then we can go about stealing villagers with our scouts. So there we have it. A cut feature that manifests itself for years as a subtle bug, then evolves into a creative tool for modding. Thank you all very much for watching, extra thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.